Hey, William, before you sit down, let me get just a quick thought to the camera. Okay. Quick thought to the camera. Sure. What's your thoughts on them silencing the people on hearing a rule change that would essentially take away the redress committee? Uh, well, I'm not sure that the single redress of grievance committee is the way to go. Um, I think uh, other people... Uh, have made uh, similar comments that um, they already have the individual committees and those committees should be hearing um, the grievances that on the issues that that committee normally hears instead of having a separate committee uh, that only hears grievances. Um, that's probably a better way to go, but um, right now uh, that's, that's what we've got until we get something better. Uh, so, I mean, it would be nice if they got rid of the Redress Agreements Committee and also uh, reinstituted a rule that the other committees had to hear um, grievances directly from the public. I mean, that would be the best case scenario. Um, and then, of course, the other thing is the, uh, the rule that the uh, committee is trying to institute regarding firearms in the State House, which is... Um, or actually any weapon to any defend weapon. yourself. Right, yeah. It's uh, just downright silly. I mean, they're clearly overstepping their bounds as far as jurisdiction goes. They can't be making uh, rules that apply to the public. They're supposed to be talking about, you know, what kind of carpet to have in here. And, and it's, uh, you know, it's and basically then a decorated setting committee. Rule, basically rules for parliamentary procedure, for a lack of a better term. Right. Yeah, it's definitely an overreach, and um, I just hope we don't have to waste time challenging it. Hopefully we have enough folks on the committee to, uh, to kill it. And All right. We can go on and do something productive. Thanks. Good afternoon, everybody. I want to welcome you all to the Rules Committee. Uh, for the record, my name is Steve Sherlock, and I'm a state rep from Concord. Uh, Speaker Norelli, Norelli would normally chair this committee, uh, but unfortunately, she had a scheduling conflict, and as the second name member of the committee, I have the honor of uh, being the chair of the Rules Committee today. I should explain, I know there are many of you in this room who have testified at other committee hearings. Rules Committee is unique insofar as that we welcome the public here, that's why we have the public meeting. But the discussion today is between the members of the House. As you probably know, each body uh, adopts the rules by which they will operate over the next session. And that is the role, role, uh, the role of this committee today to uh, make recommendations to the full House, which will be voted on our session on January 2nd. So although we welcome you here, and we're glad that you're here, uh, the conversation will be between uh, the members of the committee. Uh, just so that you know what we're going to do, and for the other members of this committee, um, we're going to start with a deadline, which is very important. I'm going to ask uh, Representative Richardson to explain the deadline, so I'm very glad that we have our clerk, Karen Wajor, here with us today. We're going to 
discuss that. Then we're going to start the whole document of the current rules. And Representative Richardson will discuss the changes. The members of this committee will discuss those changes. And then I'll ask if there's a motion whether to adopt that uh, recommended change. So if any member of the committee has a question, I'd be glad to answer it if I can. If there is an, uh, yes, the is an, I, I understand what you just said about this being a public hearing, and it does relevance is relative just to how we run our house. Right. However, it is a public hearing, and the public does come to, uh, to be heard. Yeah, it's my understanding past practices, and uh, uh, it's always been that this has been uh, for the members of this committee only. But I, I appreciate your input. Yes. Exactly correct. Are there any other questions? Seeing that, I'll ask uh, Representative Richardson. I believe he's going to be starting on page 25 of the proposed rules. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Thank yeah. you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and we are going to be talking about Rule 65, but uh, you should have uh, the committee members should have in front of them a House deadline uh, comparison. Um, and in the uh, left-hand column under 1913, uh, 2013, under 1913, uh, are the uh, proposed dates uh, for House action uh, for the upcoming session. And I'd like to, with the chair's permission, uh, ask the clerk to uh, explain the, the deadlines and uh, make a recommendation to us. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you'll note that this is a comparison of the first year of the biennium deadlines since 2001. So it's, we're only <coughs> comparing apples and apples. We're comparing budget year deadlines. And if you look at what we have as action, those are the things that you're used to seeing in your, in your deadlines in the calendar and in the rules. The major difference here is when you get, oh, sorry, there's an extra little letter L there. Um, when you get down to crossover, you'll see crossover on house bills and crossover on budgets, which of course are also <coughs> house bills. The original um, intent was to try to go with the April date of 4-4. Um, I believe there has been some negotiating with the Senate, and as a result of that, um, there is a tentative agreement if both bodies adopt these to have all the other bills cross on March 28th, leaving only the budgets to cross on April 4th. So that's why you see two crossover dates. Um, continuing along, this, um, this again matches up with what um, the other chamber has planned as far as the committee of conference deadlines. Um, amazingly, we had our recommendation ready and went over, I went over to talk to the Senate clerk and they had the same dates and we had not spoken about it at all up to that point. Um, there is a change in the deadline from what we currently have. If you remember back in June, we adopted deadlines for filing bills this fall and for the introduction of bills. Um, in those current deadlines, um, the last day to amend rules by majority vote was sometime in the middle of February. Prior to that, the last day to amend rules and the last day to introduce had been the same date. Um, and it was earlier, much earlier than the middle of February. So this proposal um, has that now coinciding with the last day to introduce, which if you are looking at a calendar, you're going to see it's a Friday, but you all know we introduce in recess, so that's why that date is there on Friday. Are there any questions about these dates? You also have a uh, two, calendar. Two, two, one, 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 oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see it. When we say crossover budgets, we're talking HB1 and HB2. 1, 2, and 25. 1, 2, and 25. Okay. Um, you also have a calendar for those of you that prefer more visual um, presentation and a separate page showing that what happens when we have the two crossover dates, what happens to the month of March. 
that information unfortunately came after I put these together. So sorry, you end up with extra pages. But we have one thing that's called draft, which is every month from now to June, except March. Then you have the March page, which is option with two crossover dates. And then you have the deadline comparison since 2001. Any questions at the floor? Is there any discussion or comments by any members of the Seeing that, I'd ask it be a motion to see a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd make a motion uh, to recommend to the House that we adopt the uh, deadlines as set forth in this uh, sheet that we've been presented with for the uh, upcoming session. Second. By a show of hands, the motion is to adopt these uh, dates. Is there any comment or discussion on the motion? Seeing those, all those who are in favor of the motion, please release your hand. Opposed? May the record show that the motion carries unanimously. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'll now go through the uh, proposed uh, changes to House rules. And you should have, all the uh, committee members should have in front of them um, a document that is dated uh, December 19, 2012 showing 2012-2013 uh, rules. Um, and uh, there were some distributed to the audience. I apologize. Uh, I didn't know we had this many people here. So if you can, if you want to look on, if you're interested in this, uh, I hope you can share. And uh, I apologize for not having more copies. Uh, just for uh, the benefit of the members of the committee, uh, and the uh, typing that is in the in blue uh, it is uh, information that's been added or uh, phrasing that has been added. Anything that's in red has been uh, stricken. And uh, Mr. Chairman, if you would like, I can go through the changes one by one and try to explain what, why they're made and, and what the impact is. Right, what we'll do is if you can go through them one by one and we'll discuss them, uh, I'll ask for a motion for that section of the change um, and then Based on that, what happened to that motion, then we'll move on to the next section. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, the first change uh, appears on page number three, uh, and it is paragraph 18 relating to petitions. Uh, and the uh, uh, existing rule is in the black print. Uh, and as you'll see, uh, under the existing rules, it says that the uh, speaker. Uh, shall state the substance of the petition in summary form and a copy shall be placed on file with the House Clerk. Uh, it's been changed to say that the Clerk of the House shall state the substance of the petition. Uh, the reason for this uh, change is that I, it's my understanding that the past, past practice has been, in fact, for the Clerk to uh, state the substance of the uh, petition, and so we really are just conforming the rules to the uh, existing practice. Those questions on that. Any questions? Mr. President Jasper. I do. Um, I think that it, it certainly, at the very least, is confusing when you look at Rule 4, which states the Speaker shall refer all bills, resolutions, memorials, accounts, and petitions, and other matters, uh, to the appropriate committee and House, otherwise ordered by the House. And then it speaks of petitions again. But now it's just talking about placing them on on file. So how is anyone really supposed to know what's what's going to happen to a petition the way the, the rules are at the present time? And by the way, I'm not meaning to cast any aspersions because I think that confusion probably existed in, in the past as well. Um, but I don't think it, it makes for terribly good policy whether it was like that in, in the past or not. Uh, and I would wonder why it wouldn't say here and refer to the appropriate um, committee unless otherwise ordered by the House to be consistent. Well, uh, if I may, uh, it, you are right. This, this uh, existed under uh, existing rules. What is contemplated here uh, is that uh, uh, the, the speaker would uh, make a decision as, as uh, is authorized under Rule 4 
to determine what will happen with the petition, whether it would be referred to a committee or not. Um, and uh, if it's one that is not going to be referred to a committee, it would simply be read, uh, uh, the clerk of the House would state the substance of the petition in some summary form and place it on the file. If I may, as a follow-up to that. Certainly. The language in four says, shall refer unless or otherwise ordered by the House. So it seems appropriate that the intent would be that it shall go to a policy committee unless uh, there is action taken by the House not to send it there. Um, again, notwithstanding what has happened in the past, uh, you know, certainly we have we had changed in the last session how things were, and now I think this creates greater confusion going forward if we have verbiage here that says shall unless, uh, and then, then the confusion in, in Rule 18. So I, I really think we ought to work to uh, to clarify this so everyone is very clear on exactly what the process is. As I say, I think that um, it should go to a policy committee unless otherwise ordered, and that's why I suggested the language in, uh, in 18 just to be consistent. Um. I think we can address that uh, if that's the decision of the committee. I think we could clarify that. I don't think it's a problem with that. But, uh, it's okay. I think the clerk may have some input to this. Madam Clerk. I just wanted to say that what happens now, regardless of where a petition is sent, a copy is placed on file with the clerk and has been for years and years and years. We maintain a full file. The summary, um, the substance of the petition is drafted by me so that it is not, it, it, there's nothing political about it. It's just a straight comment, a sentence about what this petition is about, and we have them on file. Where they go after that has, is of, of no um, particular concern to me or my office. It's just, it's a repository. Other bills and petitions are filed in various places. We have them, and some of them are in OLS and various other places. The petition file is always <coughs> in the Office of the Clerk. I appreciate, I appreciate that, and that's helpful. Follow up, if I may, certainly. Then at least at the moment, given the specific language of four and what our immediate task practice has been, could we agree that the plain reading of Rule 4 would be that the Speaker would refer to a policy committee unless there was a motion made simply to uh, take no further action on the file? And that if there was a wish to change that, then that would need to be a, a further rule change because it seems very clear what the plain reading is of the present. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Following up on Rep Representative Richardson said about working it out, I, I think we need to do something because clearly these two rules that are in, at, at odds with each other and to adopt this one puts the speaker in jeopardy of violating the rules without even trying almost. And I just, I, saying from our side, we're not opposing getting something done here, but I, we need to have different language. That, Puts four and eighteen together. I guess. Mm -hmm. That's all. So I don't know whether you want to try to do that now or bring it up the first mm -hmm. January second. and get something done in between, or what you want. To do. Let me uh, ask ask one question, and, and if it's uh, if the answer is no, then maybe we should do it January second. But uh, we could just strike the word petitions from rule four, and so we say that the speaker shall refer bills, resolutions, memorials accounts and other matters coming before the House of the Appropriate Committee. Would that solve the problem? Is that He suggested striking petitions from four and the other Well, certainly mechanically that works on, on four. It still leaves, you know, then what do we do with the petitions if someone doesn't want to place them on file? I may, um, I, I would like to see at the very least, because anyone, ultimately, a petition can be drafted as a, um, as a piece of legislation. And um, so if it, if it stated 
that the petition would be um, received and the summary be printed along with the title, be printed in the calendar so that all representatives would, would know that they were there, I think that would give the opportunity for someone certainly to come to rules to ask for a late introduction of the bill or to file it the next year. The problem is the way we do it now. If you happen to miss that reading in the House, you're not even going to know it was, was there unless it's in the calendar. So I personally would be okay with it. With it printed in the calendar. President Lever. I'm oh, sorry. President Lever. Oh, is there a challenge? No, but no, it's fine. Well, I, I was going to say they they are printed in the journal once, but my understanding of what you are suggesting is to say on Rule 18 that um, the clerk of the house shall state the substance of the petition in summary. A copy shall be placed on file with the house clerk and? And printed in, in the house calendar. That is, that's, I'm sorry, I didn't cut you off. Oh, that is, that is, that's what I'm, what I'm looking for. So that kind of, I think the clerk had a comment to make about that. Madam Clerk? The calendar is prospective. It's what's coming up. It's not what's already been done. And if you do it the way you're projecting or suggesting here, the copy should be placed on file and that shall be noted in the calendar. That's, that's not journaling it. Wouldn't note, note, noting it in the journal. Which is already done. I, I understand that, but I think probably realistically very few of us actually read the journal. What I was what I was suggesting is obviously if you hold on to a petition for two weeks so that it can be noticed in the in the calendar, that's not a problem. It would be like any other bill that we are dealing with. When you receive it, maybe the language doesn't work that way. I don't know. But simply that it would be a night an item that would show that it has been received and that it, will, it has been received and we will be receiving it that day. Um, I think that lets everyone know that there is a petition out there. It lets the public know it's, that it's there and it lets us know it's coming up. I don't see what the, the problem would be <coughs> in doing that because it would be prospective, just like any bill. Madam Clerk. I think I have a solution. Because I understand what you normally do. How about if in the second sentence it says the clerk of the house shall state the substance of the petition in summary, print same in the calendar, and a copy then. If, if, if we do after printing in the calendar, um, you want it noted in the calendar before it's done? It's, you Correct. want it before it's read? Correct. Before any petition is received and read, the substance of the petition shall be in concise form, uh, printed in the calendar, and the name of the members presenting it shall be recorded on the petition, and then go on to say it's read. Yes. So, fine. Uh, or to the Jasper. I believe so. I think it is. If the probably make that as open amendment. I would, I would make that as an, uh, an amendment to uh, amend section 18 of the House Rules. Is there a second? Second. Further comment? Well, my question is, you're still in conflict with four. So yeah, well, that would be my next same. motion if this passes. If you, if you do both at the same time. I'd be glad to also amend rule four at the same time. And strike petitions. Strike petitions, uh, reference to petitions, and uh, rule four. Second. 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 Um, you, you've amended your original motion with Representative Jasper. I, I have. Okay. And there's a second on that. Uh, any discussion? You're deleting the word petitions on, on number four and then adding parents' language on So the two coincide. Any further comments or uh, questions by, before the vote is taken? Uh, the motion is on that section that we have just read as amended by uh, Representative Jaspers. Uh, I was just going to ask for a vote, but if you have a comment, uh, I do. Representative Tucker. I understand. I thank, thank you, yeah. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. 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 Thank
Chair. Um, I understand that uh, if, if there is a conflict here, but, but I do take issue with removing petitions because I think at some point, if, if there is an opportunity for them to be referred to committee, I don't know how that will happen. Thank you. Any other comments uh, before the vote? Seeing none, the motion is before us to amend that by the uh, Representative Jasper's amendment. Those in favor of that uh, section being approved as amended, please raise your hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those opposed? May the record reflect that that section as amended vote was nine to one. And that motion carried. And when you say that section, we're really talking about both sections. Four and 18. Four and 18, I should say sections. And I thank the clerk for her input. Um, 